Continuing on with our series on how to get the most from your Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop photography subscription, we're going to take a look at Adobe Spark today. So essentially you can go to spark.adobe.com. I'm going to show you another way to get there in just a minute here, but spark.adobe.com. You've got to be logged into your Adobe Creative Cloud account to see what I'm seeing here. If you're not logged in, you're going to see a sales page. So make sure you log into your Adobe your active Adobe Creative Cloud account. And what you're gonna see is, is essentially Spark is, Spark is a way for you to create graphics, projects, layouts, designs, flyers, brochures, social media things. I'm gonna go down and uh, I'll explore all templates really quick, just to give you a quick idea of some of the things. But I'm actually, in this video, I'm actually gonna show you a way where you can take a group of photos that you took on a trip and tell an online web page story. It's different than a portfolio, it's different from a gallery. A gallery is just a quick way to share things. A portfolio is you're generally not gonna change that every day, but if you went on a trip, it's a really fun way to share your story from the trip. But as you scroll through here, you know, maybe maybe your team mom or team dad for something and you wanna create a flyer for tryouts or for something on sale, Maybe you've got grandkids that are on a team and mom and dad are super busy and you want to help them out. Who knows? You want to share a graphic to social media. Maybe, maybe you run a camera club and you want to put something on social media. There's so many different things you can do with all of these graphics and these templates that the, the good part about it, and this is what I see as I scroll through here, when we click on something like this, when I see people post their photos and put text on them to social media, most people don't know how to really lay out professional looking text. And so what happens is, is they get this great looking photo and the text looks really bad. So what's nice about these things is it takes care of that for you. It takes care of the fonts. It takes care of the layout. It takes care of the colors. It takes care of all that stuff to make it easier for you to really just concentrate on the photography. Okay. So we went to spark.adobe.com. Another place you could go is your Adobe Creative Cloud uh, Manager app. Uh, as I've said before, this app is in your programs or your applications folder. I can't tell you where it is on your computer. You've got to find it, but it's called the Creative Cloud Manager Update or whatever. Just look for something called Creative Cloud. And again, it's where all of your other apps are installed, okay? So if you don't see it in your taskbar, like I've got an option for it in my taskbar, Windows might be down here. Uh, just go look for it there. You'll see here, we've got our desktop apps, we've got our mobile apps, and then we also have web apps. And as you scroll through here, you'll see Spark is listed as one of those. And you can just go down here, click on launch, and that will take you to this Spark webpage where again, you've got to log in. Even if you've logged into Lightroom and Photoshop, you've got to log in to this webpage to be able to use it. Okay, so once you're here, you could see I could create Instagram stories, post presentations, slideshows, all these things. The way to get started, I think, is really come up here to create a project, okay? And then you can choose what you wanna create here. So we're gonna create a web page. What I want you to think about with this web page is we went on a trip somewhere and I don't have, like, let's say you don't have your own blog. See, I've got my own website and my blog and I've got a business. I fall into a little bit of a different category than a lot of you watching this because this is my living. I've got to always point you back to mattk.com. I would never, I, I can't do this because I need you on my website. It's my livelihood. It's how I put food on the table and send my kids to college. So, but everybody else, which is most people, I think this is such a cool way. So let's go ahead. Let's click on ad title. And I'm going to call this touring Tuscany. And we'll uh, go by Matt Kluskowski, okay? So essentially, I want to tell a story of my trip to Tuscany. So I'll go down here, and you can see at the bottom, there's a little plus icon. So we can click on that, and I can click photo. And over here on the left-hand side, you can see all the different places that you can get photos from. One of the really cool things is, is we've, we've talked about Lightroom collections slash albums. And when we share them, well, when we do create those and we share slash sync those, they will appear here or you can upload your own photo, All right? But I'm gonna click there because I've already done the work. I've already put these into a collection inside of Lightroom. So as I go look through here, uh, let's just go to my landscapes folder. I know there's some inside of there. 
and let's go click on one of those photos. So now it's going to drop this photo into my layout for me. Okay. And then I scroll down. Think of this as sections. So this is the top section. Now we're going to go down here and we're going to add another section. What do you want to add to this section? Do you just want it to be a photo? Do you just want to put text? Um, do you want to do a photo grid? So maybe I'll just put text and I'll just put welcome to my uh, web page where I take you along my journey through Tuscany. We went with great, great people and had a great, great time. You get the idea. And I'm just going to copy it and paste it a couple of times just to let you see how it starts to look when you fill it up a little bit. So that's the next section. So now we go down here to the next one. What do you want to do? Maybe I want to do a photo grid. So I'll click on that and it's going to, again, bring me over into Lightroom here and I've got a photo there. I'll click a photo there and I'll click another one here. I'll import those photos. So this is my photo grid. Then all I come up here to do at the top is click on save. So now I've got a photo grid and I can say these, uh, there's a little caption there. These were taken on our trip to somewhere with a camera. <laughs> really, really interesting stuff here, but I'm sure you will make it much more interesting. And then we can go click on this plus icon again. Maybe I do a split layout, add an image, and let's go grab another photo. And then over on the right hand side, click on that little plus icon and put some text. This photo was taken after a really, <laughs> after a really long drive. We got to see a lot of things. You get the idea. I'm not going to bore you with all this stuff. Okay. Scroll down. What do you want to do? Maybe you took a video. Maybe you want to put the video in here. Um, split layout. Maybe you just want to start putting some photos so we can click on photo and we can add yet another photo to this. So again, I'll just go in here and click on a photo, import that. So now it's going to put that photo and I can even choose what I want to do with the photo. Do I want it to be full screen? Do I want it to be in a window full width? Do I want it to move, replace, add a caption, all this stuff. So this you will eventually get, you'll see up at the top here, share, you will eventually get a link that you can share with other people. Okay. You could take this link and give it to people and send them to this website. Um, you can preview it here. You can see there's all, you know, different settings inside of there over on the right hand side, there's various themes. So you can click on themes and you can see, uh, which themes you're using here. So I'm just using the default light version, but as you go through there, you can see all that stuff and it'll, as you go through, you'll see, it'll even change the text. If you click and highlight text, you can change aspects about that text as well. You can put hyperlinks in there and do all kinds of interesting things. Okay. Now I'm going to go back over here to my main spark page at spark.adobe.com. The last thing I want to leave you with is where to find out more information because there's a lot you can do here. And I know there there's a lot of possible questions for this. All right. So go over here to the right hand side. And if you click on your account icon, right? So this is, this is my little headshot over here. If you click on your account icon, what you're going to see is a little thing over here that says help. Okay. So mine, mine actually, I have a pop-up blocker. So mine wasn't opening up here. So I actually had to go, you know, open it up into a separate tab, but it took me to the help page where you can find out all kinds of information, you know, how do you use folders? custom fonts, publishing, sharing, how do you log in? I mean, there's lots of little tutorials and as you can see, there's 25 articles and just creating and editing and how you can work with images and different things there. So if you've got questions on how to use Spark, this would be the place to go. Okay. So if you, if you want a tutorial, again, as I said in some other videos, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. Adobe's done this stuff. It's over here on the Adobe Spark support page. So if you have the desire to create any type of a graphic out of your photography, or as I showed you here, I think a, a photo story, a story that outlines a trip, because this would be really hard and in a way boring. When I post photos from a trip on my blog, I actually don't get all the layout options that I do here. It doesn't look as good. So as I mentioned, I have a very business purpose for doing that, but I think most of you watching this, I think you can benefit from just making a web page 
making a web page that looks really cool and it just gives you my, my whole thing is is get to get you sharing and anything that gets you sharing gets you sharing fast and quickly without a whole lot of um, without a whole lot of technical stuff to go through in the beginning to me that's a good thing and I think spark is a great place for that